have ever gotten to the end of something that you really wanted to accomplish. Like you've reached your goal, you've crossed the line and you don't even pick your head up. You're just on to the next thing. And if that sounds like you, I want to invite you into today's conversation because it sounds like me and it also sounds like my guest until she had a big epiphany last spring. So I'd like to welcome Marisa Corcoran. Marisa, thank you for being here. Marisa is actually one of my favorite copywriters to follow. And she is excellent at helping people understand how to magnetically attract the right dream clients to them. And she's an amazing copywriter. She helps her clients create an unmistakable, uncopyable message. And so I'm so honored to have her here today to talk about how we can create more ease in our lives and our businesses, because it's really best for not only us, but it's also best for our businesses and our clients. So thanks, Marisa, for being here. Oh, I'm really excited to be here, Jen. Thank you for having me. This is really fun. And it's fun to speak to another Syracuse person. That's right. Marisa lives in Atlanta, but uh, her home is from Syracuse. Mm -hmm. Born and raised in the snow, like where it would (laughs) snow in April and you couldn't go outside in April. (laughs) Or that time when it snows on Mother's Day and you're like, I can't believe we live here. Oh my gosh. I remember them saying there was like that Syracuse marathon and they moved it to April so that they would stop having blizzards during it. And then the first year that they did it, it was a blizzard on the day that they did it in April. And I was like, that's the most Syracuse thing. (laughs) That and Wegmans is the most So let's move it to Mother's Day and then it'll snow on Mother's Day. Oh, 100%. Yeah. You never know. I always say like in Syracuse, it's really like May. It's like, okay, I think we're for, we're in the clear, but still. Right. So, yeah. Can you, can you give a, get us started by talking about your business and your expertise, and then we'll move into talking about the stuff I really want to talk about today? Yeah. I mean, I think you did a, a, a great job of, of saying it. So, you know, I help coaches and creatives uncover what to say and how to say it so that they can magnetically attract their dream clients. I think that a lot of times we are diving into like a business mastermind or with a coach and diving into like, oh, selling and lead generation and all these things without actually, we're we're focused on the marketing and we're not really focused on that foundation and that messaging, which can make all those things a lot easier. And that's what we really focus in or what I really focus on with my clients. And then showing you then once you have that solid, which you said, like an uncopyable message and the copy, the core copy pieces that support it, then we show you how to amplify that and create your own stage and bring your audience and your people to you. So you don't have to rely on referrals if you don't want to. You don't have to hope that someone sees your comment in a Facebook group or even go into paid ads. It's all kind of organic and creating your own stage, but it starts with that message on the copy. I think a lot of people don't take the time to do that because it's not necessarily, well, a lot of people I think don't think they're good at it and it's Mm. not fun for them. So I always feel so discouraged when I see somebody who started with like branding what are my logos? What are my colors? Here's my website, but they haven't gotten the messaging down. And so sometimes I go to a beautiful website, but the copy is not relatable at all, or doesn't even say anything. It's like a bunch of hot air. And so I I think that what you teach people is so foundational and important. Yeah. I think you can get away with a lot. And I am a firm believer. You cannot get away with a muddied message. If somebody doesn't know, I always say you want people to follow up with you out of curiosity, like tell me more not out of confusion. And right. so we can we can tweak the design, we can do all of that, but if uh, if the message isn't there, it's it, I I find people struggle and the minute that we get that clicked in, uh, some of my clients won't even, you know, tweak anything on the website but tweak that message and they're like, "Oh, people are signing up for my lead magnet. They're booking a call with me." And it's like, "Yeah, because they understand what you can help them do, which is Again, yes. key. Key. So what you're basically talking about is ease, which is what I'm talking about all month long, how to create more ease in our business. And I want to bring you back to that email that I got from you, May of 2020. You had just kind of finished a huge push in your business and you had promised your audience something else, but you pressed pause instead. Can you tell us about that moment? Yes. Oh my gosh. First off, 20, isn't it nice to be like, oh, 2020, like last year. (laughs) I want to preface by saying that I recognize that 2020 was a hard year for, I mean, I think all of us experienced in some way, personally, collectively, the the trauma of the year. So I always want to recognize that, that for everybody, you know, for a lot of people, it was, you know, the worst year of their lives. They lost loved ones. They themselves were sick. There was so much that was happening. So I always want to preface that. And to say that I felt very blessed professionally because in April of 2020, we had come off of having about a $250,000 launch. 
which was incredible considering what was going on in the world and in the country. And, you know, and I felt really excited to welcome in these, these business owners that were just committed to creating this uncopyable message Mm -hmm. in a, in an unprecedented, we used to say like last year, like every time you hear the word unprecedented, like drink, (laughs) I was basically drunk all year, you know, cause I was just like, you know, but it truly was this unprecedented time. So we had come off of this launch and I had promised that I was going to do like for the lack of a better word, like almost a down sell into a little bit more of a self-study, like having like a copy confidence society, like selfie kind of self-study program. And so I got done with the launch and I remember looking at an Asana, like at all the tasks and things that I had to do to now create this. Mm -hmm. And I remember just voxering my own coach and just feeling not excited about it. And it was like, I had just gone over the celebration that I just made 250 thousand dollars, right? Like a quarter of a million dollars. And I was just like, okay, what's next? And I remember being out for the, cause literally it's all I did last year. And we still do is just take walks because mm-hmm. what else was there to do? My husband and I would like put a Corona and like a thing and like walk around our neighborhood. And we were on one of these walks. And I just said, as I was boxing my coach, I, I, I kind of verbally processed it where I was like, why am I doing this to myself? Like, I haven't even given myself a chance to celebrate this mm-hmm. and to let it sink in. And to really make sure that I am fully present for these people that have put their trust into me to come into this program. Right. And so I just decided I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to go ahead and create something else. I didn't need to financially. Mm -hmm. And even if I did, I definitely didn't need to like in my body, I was tired. I was exhausted. So even if I didn't had met the goal, it didn't matter. I was recognizing that like I needed to just a celebrate mm-hmm. stuff more, celebrate my wins more and not feel this constant need to keep creating. And I actually took that time in the spring to really devote to myself. And oddly enough, I went to, I did like my annual physical at that I was going to skip because of COVID. And I was just, you know, I always would find a way like, Oh, work and you know, if you live in, if anyone lives in Atlanta, you know, to get anywhere in Atlanta is like 40 minutes. So it's like, oh, if I'm going to go to the doctors, I got to get on 75. I won't be able to get back. And I would put stuff off for myself. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to go to this appointment. I'm going to do it. And it was there that I found out I had a grapefruit sized growth on my ovary. And my doctor was like, how have you been like ignoring this pain in your body? Like, no wonder you, Mm because I kind of mentioned to him, you know, I have a history of cysts and I'm feeling this a little bit here. And he was like, you know, why you're, while you're here, I don't want to make you have to come back because of COVID and everything. You wouldn't mind just waiting. (laughs) Yeah. And I 75, I was like, thank you. He was like, I would love to just, let's do this ultrasound while you're here. Let's just see what's going on. And then the the woman brings me back. I'll never forget. She was wearing like a, a Disney mask. And so we were talking about how we both love Disney and she's like, oh, and she's like had this Southern accent, you know, she's like, I love, I love bringing like my grandkids to like see Mickey Mouse. And she's doing the like internal ultrasound. And all of a sudden she just stops talking and she's like, oh, okay. So now tell me how long you've had this pain on your right side. And I was like, uh oh, I just knew you just have that feeling. The Disney lady stopped smiling. The Disney lady was just like, <laughs> no more Mickey Mouse, like, you know, goofy talk. Splash Mountain talk. She was literally like, I'm just going to have you wait here. And, you know, my, he's going to come in and talk to you. And I'm like, oh, and then he comes in. He's like, well, no wonder you've been having this pain. You have a grapefruit. This is the size of a grapefruit sitting on our ovary, which if you have ovaries, they're walnut sized. Mm. So I had a grapefruit (laughs) on top of this walnut, just like sitting there. So I ended up needing to have surgery Mm -hmm. and I'm so grateful and I'm totally fine. I'm great. I'm amazing. Mm -hmm. But I'm totally grateful that I took that time to take care of myself, which I would have missed if I didn't, if I, if I was just like, oh yeah, let me just go create this other program. And well, not. your husband asked you a really interesting question, which, which is a question I don't think we ask ourselves enough, which was, why do you think, cause you were like, oh, I'm just going to, now I'm, we just got off of this and now I'm going to, prom- I promised this. So now I'm going to make this new self-study thing. And he said, why do you think that you need to do that? And your answer I thought was really an honest answer, which was because I told people that I would. A hundred percent. And I also think, and this is something that I've really had to unpack for myself is that, so I, I grew up like watching people in my family, like struggle with money and also equate really like working yourself to the bone with making money. I've often wrestled with that feeling 
of like, well, I haven't worked hard enough. I'm not like so exhausted. And, you know, I've eaten today and I've taken time to like drink water. So that means like I haven't worked hard enough. Right. And I really had to wrestle with that in my, my body to recognize that like being that and living that way is just not sustainable, mm-hmm. nor I could let go of that, like Pat, you kind of give yourself on the back, like, oh yeah, you're like this super hard worker and like letting go of that paradigm or that feeling that had been, you know, that I had been taught and kind of passed down to me and allowed me to just be honest with my community and say, the best thing that I could do for you right now is not create something, new. offer this. Right. And I want to model this for you as well. As a leader, I want to model this for you, that if you are feeling like this or you need to do this at any time, you get to do that. So the reason I really wanted you to bring, yeah. to bring you on to talk about this is I know I've, I'm carrying this pattern from my childhood where you watch people work hard and they tell you that you work hard and that means you're going to be successful and you, you internalize it, even though I look around at all the people who were working really freaking hard and they, they weren't successful. They were scrapping all the time. It wasn't like my, my dad or my grandmother, even you know, she worked in a nursing home as a janitor. And she worked really freaking hard, right? But she was always <laughs> broke. Mm. And so I have had to learn this lesson for myself. I see it in my clients that it's very hard to believe that things could be easy for us. And if they were easy, do we deserve that? And is that what you were struggling with too? That's it right there. Yeah, if it's easy. So I remember when I first started my business, I had a good friend of mine. So I had a good friend of mine who we always, and when we were actors, because I I came from the actor world, which is like, talk about like, you know, you're working five jobs, you're at an audition, you're nannying someone else's kids, you're working at a restaurant. So one time I used to audition, work at a restaurant, nanny kids and work for a chiropractor's office. That was my life. And my, I had a really good friend of mine who she was like my side hustle sister. Mm -hmm. So we're both actors and we always tended to like be in the same job. Like we worked at the same restaurant. We worked for the same chiropractor's Mm. office, everything. So when I decided to start my business, I'll never forget this one day. I just had this afternoon where I just took off like on a Thursday, my husband and I went apple picking. Like we used to, when we lived in New York city, we had our cars and we went upstate for the day and like, or not upstate, like fake upstate, not real upstate, like what we know, but you know, like when these New Yorkers call upstate and it's like, it's like. Harlem. <laughs> you went like to Harlem. What do you mean? That's fair. Yeah. You went to West. I went, we went to literally like like two seconds away. I remember her and I talking on the phone, like, oh yeah, we went up and I could hear it in her voice, almost like you're off, like you're not working. And it wasn't she like was she judging. was like judging me, but I took it at that because mm-hmm. I was like, I almost felt guilty. Of course. And I was like, how dare I like be off apple picking on a Thursday? Like, and I didn't even post any pictures of it. Or <laughs> it's so shameful. So shameful. Right. And I've really, I have had to work, I think the hardest at that, mm-hmm. at recognizing that I started this business so that I could break that generational kind of paradigm yes. of working myself to the bone and delegating like having a team that I net, that I don't have to know everything or be everything for everyone and that my rest. So I don't know if anybody's like interested of, or if you know about, about human design. Oh, I love human design. Okay. So I got really into it and I'm a manifesting generator six two. Oh. So when they, and I'm a sacral manifesting generator. So when they, what, what you are too? No, no, no. I'm saying, so what does that mean? Oh, okay. For the people who don't know what exactly okay. does that mean? Manifesting generators and generators make up like a huge part of the population. And our kind of thing is to respond. So like, I work really well, like you asking me questions, like right now, I love interviews. Just like, ask me, it's like in my makeup, I can just respond to questions kind of on the fly. And then being like a sacral manifesting generator means I kind of know in my body if something is a yes or no. So sometimes if like you're an emotional whatever you are, you might need some more time to think about things, but like as a sacral, I know in my body, if I can just trust it and I'm usually right about it. Like in like with the spidey sense, I like get in my body. That is super cool. Okay. And then like six, two is like, usually there's a, there's a number on top and a number on the bottom. And the number on top usually will resonate with people. Like they'll go, Oh, that's so me. So a six Mm -hmm. is like a very leadership position, Mm -hmm. like trailblazer, like that kind of thing. As, As much as I think I could be I think I'm right on this. Okay. Um, and so I remember hearing about that. And sometimes I'm a five, sometimes I'm a six, depending, because my mom actually doesn't really know when I was born. Like, Oh, okay. But 
whatever that one made total sense to me. And the reason I'm telling you this is because the two, which is the number underneath, a lot Mm -hmm. of people don't automatically resonate with, but it's part of them. And the two is the hermit Mm. that I actually have a lot more like down, like I need a lot more downtime and alone time than I've ever given myself credit for. Right, 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 and I've right. kind of and always, nothing... yeah, I was like shameful of the, I'm like the hermit, really? That's not me. Right. And now I'm like, oh my God, I'm, I'm so the hermit. I'm going to grind yes. and I'm going to keep going until I have a grapefruit on top of a walnut inside my body. Literally. And it was like, no, I'm the hermit. And I actually love it now. Like in the mornings now. So I told my team, I don't like to talk to people until like 10, 11 o'clock. Mm-hmm. I get up in the morning, I work out, and then I go for a walk. I go for like mm-hmm. an hour walk. I get a tea. I really try to keep supporting this little coffee shop that's near us. Uh, like all my money basically goes to them. <laughs> so I go, I get my Earl Grey tea. I listen to some boxer messages from my clients um, mm-hmm. to just maybe get that out there and, and respond to them. And then I usually like, I'll listen to music or I'll listen to a podcast. Mm-hmm. And I just go on this walk before I even talk to anybody or do anything. So making a conscious effort to put the hermit or that alone time into my life. This human design is a great, it's just one of those other ways to know yourself better. So if you haven't heard of human design before, it's just another way to know what you need and that there's no judgment around it. It's just like, this is, this is how your makeup is and there's no need to judge it. Except when you've been born into a family and you've literally like recorded it all in your brain and you're watching these messages for your whole life that, oh, those rich people are assholes or rich people are greedy or people who don't work hard, like we don't respect them. And I've even had people say to me, because I used to be a teacher and Mm. teaching, you know, you work hard as a teacher. You get in early and you don't leave when the last bell rings at 306 because only the loser teachers leave at 306 and you Mm. save till six o'clock, right? And you, you create new lesson plans. You don't buy your lesson plans online. You create your lesson plans because there's something not noble or honorable if you're making it easy on yourself. Those are all the messages that came to me anyway. So to use a business to leave teaching and then leave my first business because there was no ease in it. And I was so grind. It was so grindy to start my coaching business and feel fun and feel easy. And I'm still not really that great at it, but I'm better than I was. But like somebody can say to me, Oh, it must be nice to, and then like fill in the blank with whatever it is, go, go apple picking on a Thursday. Oh, and yeah. that'll just gut me. It'll just gut me. Like, yes. Oh. God, I'm such a loser and I'm such an asshole. And yeah. I, all of these people are still grinding away and working so hard. So I think it's so important that we have these conversations reminding people that very successful business owners aren't grinding away and hustling to success. Or if they are, they can only do it for so long. Yeah. I like to think of like concentrated hustle. Like I have times mm, I of the that. year when I know, right? If copy chat is happening or if we are in a launch phase, I know and I'm prepared for that. But now I make sure that there's like ample time after that. That is Mm -hmm. so like this past summer. So, okay. I had my surgery. I ended up having my surgery in July and we did copy chat in August. And when Mm -hmm. copy chat ended that Friday, the next day, that Saturday, my husband and I woke up and we went to, which is our favorite place, which is Kiowa Island, South Carolina. Mm -hmm. It's like epic. It's like out of a Nicholas Sparks uh, (laughs) movie or something. It's, It's stunning. It's unbelievable. And we went there for two weeks Hmm. and it was like the best feeling. And again, something that I want to model for my own clients and my community about the need to have those periods of rest. Yeah. Yep. You said, so you said that you carve in time for your personal physical health. You said that you tell your team, this is what I want in terms of uh, communication. This is what I want in terms of time. You've carved out time for like the concentrated hustle. Are there any other tools that you've adopted that might be helpful for my audience to start adopting? Yeah. I think it's really important, like you, like we said, which is to carve it out. I think a lot of times it's like, okay, I'll work out more or I'll, but it's like an afterthought. So it used to be an afterthought for me. It'd be like, okay, well, all these things have to happen and then I'll get it in there. So, right. You know what I mean? So like actually (laughs) as you do your week or as how you schedule things that like, it's just a non-negotiable, like I'm going to get up, I'm going to work like that. I'm going to go for my walk. Like those are my non-negotiables. So I think it's actually important to actually schedule it. 
and, and, and carve it out. Well, I love this conversation because really what this leads us to is intentionality and specificity. And if we can just tweak this a little bit, that's what you have to do with your copy. You have to, if you want your, your business to be easier, like, yes, we're going to carve in time to take care of ourselves, but we also really need to work on things like attracting clients to us more easily. And I know that copy is one of the things that does that. And I know that the more specific you are with your copy and you carve out the time to write good copy, like, so everything here is all about, you know, whether we're talking about copy, whether we're talking about general marketing or generally working on our business, taking care of ourselves is a foundation but we also have to take care of things like the stuff that we don't like to do. And for many people, that is copy. And I know that that's your expertise. And for you and me, copy is fun and, and easy. But for most people, like this is another part of their business that they just like make too hard. Yeah, a hundred percent. I think it's like the number one skill that will benefit everybody if if, if they take time to learn it. And, and it's going to be different for everybody. So also like copy is, it's like what we're doing right now. So a lot of my people will come to me and say, Marisa, I don't like writing. So mm-hmm. I guess I'm not good at copy. And it's like, well, that's not true. Because if you're doing Facebook Live, maybe you love video. Maybe you love audio. So even if you were to start a podcast or you were to do weekly lives or Instagram stories, or you are a writer, right? No matter what, copy is like everywhere in your business. It's like water. You're going to be using it yeah. all the time. So finding your thing is really I think key that a lot of people don't give themselves a chance to do. They're like, well, I suck at emails, so I guess I'm not good at copy. Right. And then they make their lives and their businesses so much harder. And frankly, if people have been paying attention to us talking today, our conversation, like there's such good copy nuggets in here, the way that you describe something or a phrase that you use, or just like us playing off of each other, there's such good copy in here. So it's another, another way to make your business easier is maybe like maybe you would enjoy having an interview with somebody or doing uh, a conversation rather than writing a whole a whole piece on your own. Yeah. I think we need to start looking for giving ourselves permission to do the things in our lives and our businesses that feel easier for us. Yeah. A hundred percent. I had one of my ladies that was in the society last time and she just really felt compelled like her ideas were really like trailblazing and she wanted to have that stage for herself. And so right away we were like, you need to have your own podcast. That's Mm -hmm. your thing. You need to go and do that. And she created Mm -hmm. it while she was in the program, which is beautiful to see that kind of copy and the things that come alive for her verbally in like an audio setting. Another one of our ladies was like blogs was, she wanted to be, she loved to write she want, she loved that alone time to be able to do it and really wanted to understand how she could crack through and write better blogs and get them, you know, more eyeballs on them. Oh, ultimately, I'm, I'm so glad that you're here because I don't think enough people are talking about ease and it's okay to have things come to us abundantly with ease. You don't have to be woo woo. You don't have to be spiritual. Like you don't have to be a hippie to believe that you can, you deserve ease, but it is a pattern we need to first acknowledge and then work on. So Thank you for letting me have this conversation with you. But in terms of how we can have more ease around developing our marketing, developing our audience connections, I know that copy is a foundation. So can you talk a little bit at this point about how people can connect with you in terms of the copy chat and also the Copy Confidence Society? I'd love to learn more about that. Yeah. So the best place, I I really feel like we've made coffee so freaking fun inside of the copy chat community. And I think that that is the best place. So our next copy chat is coming up February 15th through the 19th. And it is absolutely free to listen into the series. And as of the beginning of February, you have the opportunity to sign up so that you'll be ready for when we start. And it's a whole week devoted to, you know, from thinking about how do you collect and write better testimonials? How do you, you know, create a lead magnet and have a really great call to action? We're talking about like pre-launch copy. We're also going to be talking about human design as well this season, which is really fun. And then we also have some other things about leading in times of trauma, which is also copy in the sense of like, how are you communicating with your clients during like a year like we had last year? So we have some outside the copy box interviews as well this year, but really fun. And so the best place for that is to go to the copychat.com in the beginning of February. But if you want to definitely make sure that you don't miss it, I would say just join the copy chat Facebook group now. We're a really fun crew. I go live in there every week. There's a whole community like devoted to copy in your business in there. So if you come into the Copy Chat Facebook group, that's the best way. So you'll you'll be notified right away 
when you can sign up for this, this season to listen in. I am part of the copycat Facebook group and it's a really valuable group and I love this stuff. So it's not like, um, it, it's fun for me to listen to, but the conversation, you know, you're not going to feel lost in there. You're not going to feel overwhelmed. It's just a really lovely community. So I, yeah. I definitely encourage people to get into Marisa's orbit because she's generous and she's really knowledgeable and she's very real. Like there's no bullshit when you're talking to Marisa so, or Thanks. you're listening. To, I'm, you're not actually, actually talking to her. You're listening to yeah. her. It feels like you're talking. To yeah. Her. I try to break it down in like the easiest way. I remember just, I was like this as an actor too. Like everybody would sit around and like we, everybody would be like so dramatic and like using all the big like words. And I was like, does anybody here watch Real Housewives? <laughs> and I try to bring the same thing to like the copy, right. like this world yes. too, to like just bring it down and like let our own personalities like really shine and come out. Yeah. Thank you for all of your generousness today and talking about your own experience and just having this conversation. I really encourage people to get into Marisa's world because um, the copy chat, the it's a five day, yep. uh, it's five days, right? Just the conversations that are being had. I, the first time I listened to it, I learned so much and then I just get to listen to it. You run it twice a year, right? I run it twice a year. Yep. And yeah. it's free to listen into. And then we also yeah. had the copy chat kit which people, you, you can purchase that and it gives you lifetime access to the interviews. I do a really fun bonus class. And there's like this awesome email workbook that has emails from my clients. Um, and mm -hmm. every penny, all of the money that we make from it goes to charity. And so yes. in, in 2020, we raised over 30,000 for charity. And I'm hoping between the two seasons this year, we can do the same. Congratulations. Thank you again for showing up and for just being here so fully. I appreciate it. I can't, I really like my heart is so full. Thank you oh, so much. Oh, thanks Jen for having me. This is really fun. It's super fun. Thanks everyone for checking in. I will see you again next week. Bye.